guys, Dustin here. Today I'm going to run you through my workflow for photographing glassware on white. And this is really beautiful, fun stuff to shoot. But we're going to enjoy three really cool, refresh, refreshing looks. And boy, I love this stuff. So there's more advanced ways you could approach doing this. But I'm just going to bring in a single strip light in the back. A strip box with a speed light adapter. And you really want to get it centered. And that's the key to making a symmetrical glassware shot. So as simple as this, we're going to see something that looks pretty sweet. Um, you got a nice reflection in camera, and that's because we stack two glasses. And if we see the symmetry of the edge, it looks really symmetrical. So we just kind of got lucky where we placed that. So what's really determining how this image looks? Well, one thing I find interesting to do is just zooming out your camera, just to illustrate a point. And you see the moment the flash goes off, Everything in the room is essentially dark, and that collapses into the edges of these glasses. They reflect that. And then the white, the volume, is really made up of the direct reflection behind it from the strip box. That's a cool trick, eh? Having the two uh, glasses stacked on one another. It's a great alternative to pl plexiglass. Okay, so we're going to zoom back in and see what we're dealing with. And what are the parameters of this lighting setup to change it even more? Well, what really determines that edge thickness, keeping in mind this sort of uh, scheme that I just showed you zoomed out is the distance of your strip box to your subject because perspectively now it's getting smaller It's also really hard to keep it perfectly symmetrical when you back it up But you see by backing it up. Uh, there's more, you know edge darkness And you know you can play around and really say what do you like? I think I like thinner a bit more than thick plus when thick's happening There's a really wild time going on up here in the glass and all sorts of problems to solve but the thin one, it looks pretty minimalistic and simple. So, you know, I'll probably return this somewhere uh, here in the middle. Now, this has a lot of applications uh, as well in creative photography, like picture an absolute bottle next to, you know, a glass with vodka in it. And this kind of look uh, is suitable for all that kind of stuff. So perhaps we're overexposing a bit, but something to keep in mind is right up here at the top. I mean, if you don't mind taking these into post, you could easily fake those top edges with a simple sort of oval. Um, of course, if you're doing 150 shots for somebody, you really want to get it right in camera. I'll make a video in the coming weeks uh, going over a more in-depth method of how to do this professionally. But today, I just want us to keep things simple and enjoy this simple look. You notice maybe there's some asymmetry in the body of the wine glass down here. Uh, one thing you can do, which is kind of interesting, is you can straighten your item and you can cut it down the middle and then you can flip it. And this is a kind of cool workaround because now you're dealing with uh, you know, a mathematical level of perfect symmetry. Some of you might enjoy that, some of you might not enjoy that, but it's a cool trick to keep in mind if you just want things to be perfectly symmetrical. Let me just return to our base image. You could also you know, take a certain thing, like let's say I like the left part of the body of this wine glass. Well, I can make a crude selection around it. I'll just do this quickly. Flip it over and you can move it and really zoom in and place it perfectly. And you know, you could take that over in small parts as well. It's just something to keep in mind that you can do a bit of editing if you don't have to crank out 200 of these, if you're just trying to build up maybe a bit of a portfolio. If you really wanted to get a thick edge in camera, you could always employ one of these techniques where we are reflecting a black card. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is not do what I did there. I'd probably get it so it's not in the back of the glass. Oh, I'm really flirting with the edge. Sometimes it's hard perspectively to see where that really is going to end up. You just got to see what the camera's seeing. But even that frame, and I'll just shoot off another one, and our original, uh, you can see almost no difference, to be honest. <laughs> Let's redo that and try getting it really close. And, you know, I really don't think this step is 100% necessary. TBH. Oh, that's great. That's a great comparison frame. Um, but you see, it does... It does something. It may retain a bit of edge information for you to mask in, but it also introduce some unpleasant uh, reflection in there. Um, you're seeing that we're getting some crazy lens flare going on. And in reality, if I was doing a commercial shoot, I'd probably address that by at least changing the angle I'm looking at uh, the glass or something just to not get that optical flare. But, you know, it's not the biggest deal for educational purposes. So we'll just move right along. So I just threw in a champagne glass and let's just see how the same lighting scheme can be applied. And sometimes you'll have to make a few tweaks um, for instance, I actually think this looks kind of cool. It's kind of getting dark near the top slightly. And that's because my light really isn't distributed that evenly. And I might want to just move this upwards to sort of adjust the hot spot. 
And perhaps I'll show you another image to sort of illustrate what I meant by that. This looks good. Maybe I'll turn it down a third of a stop. And let me zoom out for a moment. And you'll see when my speed light goes off, there's a serious radial glow. So there's a sort of center point where it is bright. And that's what I meant by adjusting vertically your strip box. I wanted to match that to what I was shooting. Once again, we just have to center it. And that's really where the tweaking comes in. All right, I think that looks cool. Nice. Now perhaps there's a bit of asymmetry once again going on in the bottom of the body. And you know, a bit of digital work could clean that up really quick. But that's a pretty good catalog shot right there. Might as well grab the whiskey glasses while we're at it. And guys, leave me a comment below if you have any questions. I like responding to people. Okie dokie. A little off center. And this becomes very evident in a whiskey glass because we're getting those bold reflections in the bottom. Leave me a comment if you have any ideas for future episodes. I'm very receptive to that kind of stuff. And I want to know what you guys want to shoot. I'm planning on doing a lot of wines, whiskeys, and maybe some fancy cheeses. Uh, we'll see. Perhaps as a garnish of some sort. Okay, I think that looks pretty centered, guys. And if you're not in love with the top of this rim, again, easy fix and post. So maybe this is a little bit of a post-heavy uh, way to shoot this kind of stuff. But like I said, I will show you a more advanced method in the coming weeks. So subscribe if you want to stay tuned for that. But look what we were able to get here. I mean, this is fine. This is great. I love this. These are all gorgeous. And we're getting them on a nice bright background. And you can really have fun when you line up the perspective to look similar between them all like we've kind of done here. Because then we can comp together some fun stuff like this on darkened mode. And, you know, just have a wild time with our shots if we were maybe doing a glass pack. So either way, great stuff for your portfolio. Guys, subscribe if you want to see some great new videos. I'm going to be churning them out like a factory. And make sure to thumb up the video because it's a great way to help the channel. I'll see you guys all next week. Have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.